Welcome back to the Unreal for Unity Developers tutorials. In the last tutorial, we created a really simple material that we have applied to our jump pad over here with just a texture and a couple parameters so that we could play around with. In this video, we're just going to kind of drill home the whole material system and we're going to create another material you know, kind of quickly. So just play along with this, pause if you need to, if it goes too fast. And this is kind of just going to be to get the flow of how to make a material. And we're going to actually do a little bit of, of work in the material to create something interesting. But first and foremost, we right click over here and we can create a new material. This particular material we'll just call M clouds. Now you're going to want to grab yourself a clouds texture for this one. And uh, if you have Photoshop, you can just use the clouds filter. We're not talking about an image of clouds, but just a, a grayscale image. Uh, that's uh, that has like that kind of pearl and noisy cloud look and you can uh, experiment with it and try all different kinds of stuff but for now just grab uh, anything I just did a Google search and found one so I'm gonna import that and yeah, and you could just drag it in to do an import and you can see I have my texture clouds here so first thing I want to do is get that in the shader Okay, so we have our texture sample. Now, I'm gonna run through a bunch of stuff in here and explain it as I go, but some of it might not make sense, but that's okay. It's just good to, to get in here and actually see it first. The first and foremost, this isn't gonna be just a normal texture or normal material. We're not just, we're not gonna be creating a material that's to be slapped onto a mesh. This is gonna be a, a light material. So it's kind of like a light cookie in Unity. So if you click in this grid area, you'll see you get some properties here for the material and there's different material domains now in this particular case we want the light function domain watch the right side of the screen over here when I change this so you can see that this changes completely so the outputs are totally different now and they are just an emissive color so for now let's just take this and drag it directly into the emissive and you can see that this is the result of it just the, the black and white texture that we have in there so I'm going to dock this over here and let's go back into our scene here and what we want to do is find the light. We want to find the directional light. So I'm just going to type in light here and you can see here's our light source. It's a directional light and we're going to want to look in this section here and find the light function material. So we can use this drop down over here and you see it gives us a choice of our materials. We just created M clouds. So let's grab that. All right, so not exactly beautiful. You can see anywhere the directional light is hitting now has that is basically that kind of displaying that texture as shadows. So this is a kind of light function is a kind of thing where you can use it just like a light cookie. You can have, for instance, if it were just the outline of a tree or something, you would be able to point a spotlight onto a wall and would have a nice silhouette of a tree. In this particular case, you can kind of get an idea what we're going to do here, maybe. You can see that it, it looks a little bit like clouds. So what we're going to end up with with this material is basically the, what the shadows would look like if it was a really cloudy day and the clouds were just blowing by. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is we're actually going to want to drag this off and add a new node in here. We're not just going to be taking the texture and putting it directly into the emissive color. So type in lerp and you'll see we have a linear interpolate here. This works exactly like Unity's math.lerp, vector.lerp. It takes a value in A and a value in B, and then alpha is something between zero and one. And when it's zero, you get A back. When it's one, you get B back. And when it's some number in the middle, you get a blend of these two things. We're gonna need an alpha value, and this is gonna be something that we're gonna expose as a scalar parameter. So we already know how to do that now. We type in scalar, we get scalar parameter, and here we go, we have our parameter available. Let's just call this strength. And we'll give it a default value of something like maybe 0.7. What's gonna go on the B node here, what we're gonna want in there is just the color white. Reason for that is you can see the dark spots are creating shadows, but the pure white spots are just shining through like the normal directional light would be. So we wanna be able to balance out how much shadow there is and how much light and we want to be able to kind of blend out some of the dark spots right click in here and what we're going to want this time is instead of a scalar parameter we actually don't need a parameter at all we just need a constant so 
type in constant and what we want is a constant three vector. So this is a RGB. So we can drag that into our lerp and then we can drag our lerp into the emissive color. Now I mentioned that we want this to be white because we want to be able to blend out some of these darker spots. So let's just turn this with the color picker into white and I'm going to go ahead and save this now. And just so we can get an idea of how it's looking, you can see with that blend in there, it's starting to look a lot better. So I'm going to create an instance from this. Remember, we can go to our material, which is M clouds and right click and we get the create material instance. So I'm going to create a material instance. I'm going to take that and drag it over here and open that up. Let's just get it off to the side here. And now we can play with the strength parameter to see how it looks. So if we drag it down, you can see it really makes those blacks really dark. And if we drag it up closer to one, you can see we get a nice little effect. So around 0.7 or so looks pretty good. So we'll leave it like that for now and jump back into the material. Now we're not quite done in here yet. So I'm just going to move this over. Give us some room. Now there's a couple more things we can do here. Now we mentioned that we wanted this to look like clouds passing over the sky. So uh, what we can do for that is there's actually a node built into to the material system called a panner. So let's just type panner and drag that out. This in Unity world would be equivalent to uh, taking the time and changing your UVs over time. Unreal provides a, a nice little node to do that for us. What we're going to do is drag the output of the panner into the UVs here. And we're going to want to give it a couple inputs. One of them being speed, which is again going to be a scalar parameter. Now we want that to be a parameter so we can play with it from the outside in our material instance. And let's call that speed. And let's give it a, a value of maybe like 0.1 to start with. And over here in this uh, this section over here now, we didn't really discuss this too much and we won't go into too much detail, but when you're in the material instance, it'll actually create a slider for these and you can define the minimum and maximum values. So for this, I'll just change these to minus one to one. And you can also change the group that these appear in. And you'll notice that there's none right now. So we could just put setup, for example. And I'll just go over here and change this to setup as well. So let's save that and take a look at what it looks like in the instance. So now you can see we have a setup section and you can create multiple different sections when you're when you're doing this. You can have as many as you want and organize your parameters any way that you want. It's not really doing much just yet. That's because we haven't actually wired this up with anything. So we're going to need to have the time passed in. So let's just drag out and guess what we're going to type in here. Time. And of course Unreal has this built in. And the last thing that we need here is going to be the coordinate. That's going to be the texture coordinates. So if we right click and just type in text coor, we get texture coordinate. Drag that in. Let's save this material. jumping back over you can see that we now have that scrolling effect going on it's uh it's a little fast but it's working so let's try changing that to something like maybe 0 0.01 that's much better i'm just going to drag that strength a little bit closer to one there we go we have a pretty cool looking cloud light filter now jumping the light function in here it's got some options so that we can configure it the way we want to. Just missing one thing that I'm not liking in here. These, this particular texture isn't the best I've ever seen for this. It kind of has a lot of really small splotches. So I'm just gonna add one more thing in here. Basically I'm gonna take this texture coordinate and provide a way to scale it. So the way we would do that is drag off a new node and we're gonna wanna multiply it by some value. So you can type in just the the little asterisk and you'll get the multiply or you could type out multiply to get this and we're going to want the output of that to be our new coordinate so let's provide ourselves another scalar this scalar parameter here we'll call this 
texture scale. And we'll also stick this in our setup section. So let's save it out. Uh, probably don't want to give it a default value of zero though. So let's change that default value to one. Okay, jumping back in for the final time here. We're gonna check the box here so we can change our texture scale. And let's just use the slider and see what we get. Okay, so by raising that texture scale, we're actually getting really, really, really tiny clouds. That's not exactly the effect we're looking for. So we wanna do kind of bring that down closer to zero. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's just give it a play to see how it looks in game. Oh, you'll notice that when I pushed play, it actually didn't jump into the character like we thought it would. And you can see that gear icon behind there. This is just a good little aside. And that's just because it's in simulate mode. So simulate mode, we'll go into it in, in a different video, but it lets you basically simulate the physics without actually taking over the pawn controlling this guy. So we're gonna change that to selected viewport. And now you can see it's just like normal. And we have these clouds rolling overhead. And it's all looking pretty good. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.